Graves, Graves is first. You've been first. What changed in your life that has brought you from being late all the time to being a uh, top dog? What changed? Did your job change? I would like to know. I'm invested in whatever this answer is. But I should be fun. Easter. Easter is a fun one. Oh, nah, I didn't expect you. I figured you'd be doing family stuff. It's Easter. What are you doing? I expected like two people or people who like, you know, live alone or single. No, aren't aren't off with family today. But it's it's good to see you. Four hours changed. Jeez. So is that your shift? I assume the shift probably changed. I am green, and I would like to know why. Why is that? That corrects it. The camera's pulling something in. Yeah, I need to buy new lights. Because it, it's the lights, for sure. It's always been the biggest freaking headache out of everything. I need to, that's something I need to just invest the money in. Uh, give me two seconds. So we're, I, what I want to do is we're going to run through some of like the history of Easter. I figured kind of just have fun because honestly, I, I only expected like two people to be here probably. Uh, so I would just like run through the, the, some of the history of Easter, some of the differing opinions of the history of Easter, and then maybe read some of the Ascension story or, th or things like that. But just things, things surrounding Ascension. And I figured we'll do like 45 minutes and then call it a night so everybody can, you know, be with family and, and do their thing. I will jump in the, the voice channel in case anybody does want to come on. Obviously, you know, no pressure. Just chill if you want to. That your green screen background to cats in outer space. That done. Done. Yeah, so I'm going to get new lights. I'm going to use these lights, these old ones, on the green screen. Because right now it doesn't work as a green screen. Uh, yeah, I need more illumination on it. I already tried. So once I get new lights for me... I'll put these back there and then I will absolutely do cats in outer space. I think that's a phenomenal idea. I like that idea. I like that idea. So we'll do that. Let me. All right. Yeah. Discord's open. I guess just a reminder while, while we wait, or if you're watching this later, you're watching a recording. We have a discord server. That's where everybody just kind of hangs out. Spirituality, conspiracy, the Bible, science, theology, and then off topic is just, you know, a free for all. But the Discord will also help you understand when we do live streams. So if you hit the events tab in the mobile, it's weird now. And on your mobile phone, it's like up in this area. And it's a little calendar button to see the events, which I don't really like. But you have to hit that. And then tonight, you see we're doing Bible study at 6 p.m. Thursday, we have an open forum discussion, a topic based discussion uh, live stream that we do at 7 p.m. on Thursday. And then Saturday, we go over that week's news, whether it's Christian or not. It's mostly secular stuff at 7 p.m. on Saturday. So we do all that. It's good stuff. The group is full of really good people, super smart people that make me rethink how I approach most of the things that I think about, which is beneficial. It's a very good thing. Ghost, I'm telling Jesus. I almost forgot about Bible story. Oh, about Bible study. I don't blame you. It's Easter. We did all of our Easter stuff early, even though we were at church past midnight. Good God. Good God. That's wild. That's that serious Catholic stuff, though. Man, my stuff's got me straight green. It looks like St. Patrick's Day in here. All right. So first, first things first. Uh, I wanted to just kind of look at some of the pagan roots. And actually, let me pop this out real quick. So some of the pagan roots of Easter. If you, you know, any, it's not a lot of you, and I don't think any of you here have, but for any of the people who are like in our group who have, like Rodriguez, Drew, these people who have been around me for like seven years, they know like usually every year, I, I do it every, every year usually on Christmas and Easter outside of when I wasn't doing YouTube. I do a video basically just saying like Christmas is pagan, Easter is pagan, and just kind of laying it down 
and Christians absolutely hated me for it. But I felt like it's the right thing to do to at least let people know that that's the reality. Like a lot of this stuff we do get from paganism. We just, we do. And it doesn't, you know, invalidate the Christian view of it. It doesn't take anything away from how we celebrate it today. It's just the reality that these traditions were not ours. They were not our traditions. They're ones that we picked up from others. And I don't, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. And a lot of it had to do with missionary work where we were, you know, co-opting essentially a lot of these traditions so that we could integrate people into Christianity. I don't really see anything wrong with that, but Christians get very defensive about Christmas being Jesus's birthday. And no, it's not like the majority of scholarship puts his birthday from my understanding between like late spring and late summer. So it's, no, it's not his birthday. Probably today. Easter is not when Jesus rose from the dead. Like that's not what it is. Never has been, never will be. These are days of remembrance. So there's nothing against that. Today is, is a beautiful day of remembrance. It's something that you should do. It's something that you should spend with family. The one thing that's annoying is like Valentine's Day, Kat and I talk about Valentine's Day shouldn't be the day that you treat your spouse the way that you should treat them every day. And you're going to have off days where like you're not super gushy and you're not buying flowers or you're not rubbing your husband's back or whatever. But most days you should be showing appreciation of like you deal with me every day. You fill my needs. I appreciate you for that. That should be most days. Easter is the same type of deal. It shouldn't be the day where we're like, okay, now we care about God. Now we care about God. And then tomorrow you don't care again. And you don't talk about it again. You don't read about it again. You don't try to understand what it is again. Go said traditions are just memes put in the slow cooker, which is a good way to put it. That's a pretty accurate way to put it. Robert said, therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing, then I will welcome you. What was the context for that? Would be my question to you. Lilith, good to see you. United the living, breathing churches of the YouTube verse. I like that. So uh, point being, point being, the eggs, it's not Christian. It wasn't Christians. It's something we adopted. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. If anything, we win. We win. Christmas. The giving of the gifts, it wasn't ours. We didn't create it. But guess what? We win because now it's ours. I don't get why Christians aren't just proud of this. These are victories. These traditions that belonged to false uh, religions, they're ours. We took them. Why that isn't like, yeah, we win. It's just I've never understood it. So I found this decent article. It breaks things down. It's not perfect. It doesn't give the whole story. Uh, it's not super in-depth. But it's interesting. It gives kind of an overview. And I mean, just fun, fun for Easter, man. Just chill tonight. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. That's why I have it on the screen there. So we can just hang out. And if we read a paragraph and just talk to the rest of the time, I don't care. And the voice channel is open. If what? If I didn't already say that. So everybody loves Easter, whether it's the chocolate bunnies or egg hunts. But did you ever stop to think where these traditions came from? Sorry, I made it big and then I lost where I was. How did a celebration of Christ's resurrection come to be celebrated with rabbits and chocolate eggs? Well, we have these traditions because Easter was originally a pagan festival, much like Christmas. As Christianity gained popularity, a lot of pagan customs and rituals were integrated into Christian festivals like Easter. Let's take a closer look, blah, 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 blah. So the pagan or Jesus stole the winter solstice and kept Santa too. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a win. It's a win. We win. You lose. Your eggs are ours. Your painting of the eggs are ours. The, even the baking that they did, the baking, putting, putting shapes into baked goods, we took those and we put crosses on them. We win. We win. Go said, in our mirror universe, children hide full-blown rainbow-colored chickens from the adult, for the adults to find. That's hilarious. What a great, like, short skit that would be. Just like a... Like a, a, a you know, a short series of three minute, five, three minute videos animated of that. I think that'd be phenomenal. That'd be beautiful. While Christmas was celebrated in the winter solstice, Easter was a celebration of the spring equinox for the pagans. Pagans lived their lives in strong accordance with nature's rhythms 
and patterns, and solstices, uh, and solstices and equinoxes were considered to be sacred times. A solstice marks the longest or shortest day of the year, while an equinox symbolizes the day where there is balance between daylight and darkness. This shows the end of one season and the beginning of another. In the Northern Hemisphere, Easter falls on the spring equinox, when winter is coming to an end, and nature is experiencing a rebirth and renewal, which is the whole kind of crux of the celebration. This is naturally a cause for festivals and celebrations as the darkness comes to an end and plants and leaves start to regrow after the cold winter. How is Easter adopted into Christianity? I'm going to preface this by saying this is a very, 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 yes, Kelly, we took them over. They are ours. We win. This is an extremely light version of this. So I guess caveat beyond that is that finding, finding reliable data about the specifics of how Christianity actually took it over, I'm fully sold that it's impossible. You're never going to do it. Because this is one of those things that I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out. Both Easter and Christmas, I've spent easily several weeks of my life, like eight-hour days, several weeks total, like over years, but weeks, trying to collect and aggregate as, as much data on how Christianity actually took it. Like, what was that process like? What was the actual time period specifically? What did that look like? Because I've always wanted to really be able to like explain it in depth. So I needed to understand it in depth. I don't think it exists. You can obviously find tons of information on it, but I've never been able to like really corroborate any of the stories or any of the data that I've seen. So there's your preface. Around mid 380, Christianity was increasing in popularity in Rome, then the center of the world. In 312, the Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity and put an end to the ongoing persecution of Christians. However, he knew that just because he had converted, it didn't mean that pagans would stop following their rituals and traditions. So, he slowly started to adopt existing pagan rituals into Christian festivities. In 325 AD, the Church Council, known as the Council of Nicaea, if you don't know anything about this, Nat can probably tell you, because she's one of them Catholic folk. I'm kidding, I love you. Uh, Council and I see is actually, in my opinion, it's a really important thing to understand as a Christian, even you know if you're not Catholic, because no matter what kind of Christian you are, you, you are the product of this council. Not just that one, but it's an important one. It's one that everybody should have an understanding of. And honestly, a lot of what they said is good stuff. It, it, it's it's a extremely, know, know them all too well. It's an extremely important thing to understand a lot of the councils that happened in early Christianity, a lot of them happen to have happened within the Catholic Church. So it's an important thing to understand, one of them weirdos. Traditions collide over time, just like galaxies do. Some incorporate, some destroy each other. Yeah, interesting. That's true, isn't it? I love the way you say things a lot of the time. It's very well said. It's very, very well said. And it's very true. It's absolutely true. All right, so council, known as the Council of Nicaea, first decided that Easter celebration should fall on the Sunday after the first full moon of the spring equinox. And thus, Easter Sunday was born. And symbols associated with nature's rebirth and renewal came to be associated with the rebirth or, or resurrection of Christ. If you're interested in pagan traditions, you might also want to check out these six Christmas traditions are actually pagan customs. Where does Easter get its name from? In most of Europe, the Easter celebration gets its name from the Jewish festival of Passover, which occurs at a similar time in the spring equinox. So in Greece, Easter is called Pascha. No idea if I'm saying that right. In Italy, it's called Paschia. No idea. In France, it's called Paschias. Denmark, it's called Paschia. No clue. No clue. I'm sure I'm close, close to right, maybe. But in Germany and in German, yeah, in Germany and English speaking countries like England, Easter took its name from the pagan goddess Oestra. That one I do know how to say. The goddess of spring and fertility. The funny thing is, you'll actually find Oestra's name written different ways and, and uttered different ways, depending on kind of who, who you're looking into. 
but oestra is is probably the most common pronunciation of it. But it, it it's a very obvious where we got the name Easter from when you look at it like that. Funny story, one of the hundreds of times I was in the ER for my health issues, I went on a Saturday night before Easter, before Easter Sunday, I was put on intense pain meds because large, okay, I'm not going to say that for the sake of your privacy. Is that a funny story? Oh, okay, never mind. It's, I, I'm very slow. I'm very slow, but I'm with you now. I'm with you now. I was sent to get an MRI without contrast. Long story short, I got my stride for Easter. Good God. If you're watching this recording later, you might want to follow along with the live chat. But I'll make you at least go through the work to read that. It's like the perfect setup for a joke for real. It really is. It really is. That was extremely dark and bright at the same time. All right. Easter symbolism and foods. It, yeah, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Easter symbolism and foods. Now that we've come to understand Easter's original nature as a celebration of spring, the symbolism starts to slowly make sense. Let's take a closer look at where Easter's symbolism came from. Where did Easter eggs come from? Eggs are a symbol of new life and rebirth. Actually, are they going to tell you the story of the bird? Let me see. No, they're not. So before we read this part, I want to tell you a different story. Because I just, they're not, they're not going to cover it in this. And I, I think this is very interesting. So there's, there's a story that I actually put in one of the past videos that I did. Nobody said anything about it. Why that's funny is because from what I actually understand, because a lot of this is hard to, to actually validate or verify, is that there's a pretty popular story, apparently, that I had never heard before, I think last year or the year before, where Oestra had a friend that was a bird. And I, I talked to my kid about this this morning. She had a friend that was a bird. And the bird, for some reason, some way, turned into a bunny. However, during that transition, which is a hard thing to say in 2024, during that transition, the bunny retained the physical capability of laying eggs. And that's where we get the Easter bunny from. I, I can't find that dating back anywhere past like, you know, 10 years. So I don't, maybe that is true. Maybe it's true. I don't know, but it's, it's one of the most fun Easter stories that I had ever heard. So I, I included it in one of my videos where I covered Easter and the pagan roots. Because maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. It doesn't matter. Not at all. But it's a fun story. It's a fun story. A bird that turns into a bunny. Bunny can still, for some reason, why? But for some reason, he can lay eggs. That's where we get the Easter bunny from. I don't, I don't think that actually dates back. I guess I always thought of him leaving eggs and not laying them. Yeah, that's that's probably the general consensus, but I thought it was a fun story because the whole the whole story actually is that like that is the true origin of Easter. That's that is actually a an ancient pagan traditional story. And it's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a great story, but no, it's not. So where did the Easter eggs come from? Eggs are a symbol of new life and rebirth, just as nature returns to life after the cold of the winter, or Jesus is resurrected, resurrected after the crucifixion. Decorating and eating eggs on Easter be first became a custom during the Middle Ages, when people would decorate and eat hard-boiled eggs following Easter Sunday Mass after fasting through Lent. This ritual is still popular in many Eastern European countries, where you'll find families hand-painting and eating actual non-chocolate eggs on Easter. We did that today. Why is Easter associated with a rabbit? My brother told me, my brother told my cousin the Easter Bunny wasn't real when they were kids, and my mom gave him a gnarly pinch. <laughs> he was in big fat trouble. <laughs> now the eggs may make sense, but how did a rabbit come into all of this? The symbolism can be especially strange when you consider the fact that rabbits don't lay eggs, but it all ties back to the concept of fertility rebirth, and renewal as celebrated by the pagans. The sacred symbol of the goddess Oestra was a hare, and rabbits have long been considered a symbol of fertility due to their ability to reproduce quickly and in large numbers. That is accurate. That's the truth. 
really. Nat said his response was, quote, what next time you're going to tell him he Santa's not real or God? A lot to unpack there. There is. There is. One of the sad things is like you as like a Christian parent, you you convince your kids that Santa's real. You convince your kids that the Easter Bunny is real, the Tooth Fairy, and then also God. And I've actually heard people like like teenage kids when I was doing youth ministry say that part of the reason they started to doubt God is because their parents lied about all the other things. They're like, well, they lied about the Easter Bunny. They lied about the Tooth Fairy. They lied about Santa Claus. Why wouldn't they be lying about God? And I totally get the point. I get the point. Santa is supposed to be this fun thing that brings you cheer as a kid and it's supposed to make you feel good and provide something to you emotionally as a kid. So is the Tooth Fairy. So is the Easter Bunny. So then if you find out all of those are BS, you're like, okay, well, what's the point of God? For many Christians, it's just to give you security. It's like to make them feel good and feel like they're covered and feel like they're good emotionally. So then, I don't know, it's illogical. Then as like a 15-year-old kid, to be like, okay, you lied about literally all of these mystical things. So now why the hell wouldn't you be lying about God? Just so I'd be a good person. So I follow the rules. So I stay in church. I don't have sex before marriage. It's like the perfect scam. It's the perfect scam. And when kids told me that in youth group, it was like very early when I was doing, when I, when I got into vocational ministry, I was like, damn, that's a freaking valid point. That's a great point. And it became a whole conversation, but I thought it was really interesting. Because I had never really thought about that before. And I think it's a great point. One sec. All right. All right, there we are. But the first official mention of rabbits or hares is associated with Easter. Or hares is in association with Easter. Was only made in 1722. In a folklore book written by George Frank von Frankenew. A German writer, one of the stories recounted in this book mentions an Easter hare that hides colored eggs for children to find. The first written mention of an Easter egg hunt. Since the book was a collection of folklore, it's reasonable to, to suggest that Easter egg hunts were already a custom at the time. In the 19th century, the greeting card industry experienced a boom. This was because more people were able to send and receive letters and parcels by post. As a result, card companies like Hallmark started to really market particular holidays with fun and festive greeting cards. Easter was one of them. Cards started to appear with cute illustrations of rabbits and Easter eggs, popularizing the connection between Easter bunny, rabbits, and colored and colorful eggs. There is so much wild truth to this. And this is what bothers me about Christmas. It's what bothers me about Halloween, about Easter, about even like the 4th of July to a degree, but all of these holidays that, you know, go and I, I would love to see like an actual timeline. If somebody took the time to put together like a visual timeline of the progression of commercialism in, in, in corporatism alongside a holiday. So like take Christmas because it's probably the greatest example. What did Christmas actually look like in both society and within the home? during the 20s, then the 30s, then the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, all the way up. Just like, what did the outside of houses look like? What did the, the shopping areas look like? What did eating areas look like? What did the living room look like? And I guarantee it's, it's an exponential, like a parabola of just, just consumerism, just stuff, stuff and things and flash and lights and sugar and just absolute garbage that has nothing to do with what you're actually celebrating. I'm actually tinfoil hat. I think the not only obviously the biggest thing is is money. It's just companies. It's, it's how the market works. You see an opening, you're going to take it as a company, which I, I don't hate. Like I get it. And if people are willing to buy it, that's not on you as a company. You're killing it. Uh, but the other side of it for me being a tinfoil hat where is that it, in part, I wouldn't be surprised if some of that was to just water down the holiday. Like at this point, even Christian people, in my experience, not all, but some, they don't really talk about like Jesus during Christmas. It gets mentioned, but Christmas is not about Jesus. Christmas is about consumerism, but also then Jesus for a little bit. Easter is pretty similar, in my opinion, in my opinion. 
but I don't like that. There's a lot of truth to the whole consumerism thing. It's a part that's always aggravated the hell out of me, but it is what it is. Uh, Nat said, one, some kids aren't as fortunate and it's not fair for Santa to treat others better or worse, two, to be grateful for how hard mom and dad work to make them happy, not just Santa. I mean, yeah. Rodrigo said, nah, Easter bunnies don't have a Bible and there's no Santa Sunday service. And we don't pray the tooth fairy to bless our food. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't I think they're all garbage though. And like in reality, I think they're all trash. I think if anything, it should be the opposite of what it is. Christmas should, should be the opposite of this. It should be the opposite. We shouldn't be spending a bunch of money. Stop spending money. Instead, all the money, donate it. Donate all the money. Have it go somewhere else. Like, we don't need to be buying each other shit. I can buy my own shit. You can buy your own shit. We, we go give all of that. Like, my family, my, my blood family, we don't give gifts. We, we say, hey, donate here. Donate there. And my dad will donate there. And my sister will donate there. We do that instead. I'm down to get all my own stuff. I don't need you to buy me socks. Bro, I got it. I got it. It's, it should be the opposite. The, the family time, I think, is really good, obviously. But is it for a purpose or is it just an excuse? You have an excuse to get some time off work, to, to be a part of festivities. But it, where, like, what's the intention? It's like anything else. Some families, I'm sure, are very, very intentional about how they do Christmas. And I think that's awesome. But I think for most of America, it's not intentional. It's like you're, you're taking advantage of a situation. You're benefiting from something. But is, is there any true, like, religious intent behind it? Because there probably should be. There are tons of symbols that represent fertility, rebirth cycles, etc. Even though symbols are different, they're still pointing to silk art ideals. Similar ideals. Got it. Okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I was just about to say, is it their fault for selling it or ours for buying it? It's totally ours for buying it. Yeah, I don't blame companies at all. I met, I mean, Rodriguez hates me because I'm a, I'm a huge capitalist, huge, massive. It's got its problems for sure. It's not perfect, but I think it's the, I mean, it is undoubtedly the best, you know, economic system that's ever happened. It's still got problems, no doubt. It's not perfect, but it's the best there is. And, and if you as a consumer are willing to buy something stupid, it's not the company's fault that you're dumb. It's not the company's fault that you're succumbing to wanting fucking a thousand strings of lights around your house. And so you spend all this money on Christmas lights. That's not the company's fault. I mean, God, I, as I'd have no problem. I, I have no problem with taking the blame for when I buy stupid stuff. That's not their responsibility. You're the dummy for buying it. I'm the dummy for buying it. We all get each other pets, Christmas gifts instead. Yeah, we get each other's dogs stuff. We don't buy each other stuff. Since God allows for free will, God is a capitalist. Boom. Remember, Joe, I don't hate you ever. Yeah, I know. I'm just being dramatic. I don't hate you ever. I just know capitalism is the devil. Yeah, so is communism. So is socialism. They're all the devil because they're all people. No matter what, it becomes demonic. Why do we eat chocolate on Easter? As a hard segue away from communism and capitalism. So when did we stop eating hard-boiled eggs and start eating chocolate eggs and bunnies instead? Around the same time that greeting cards were booming in Germany, it was popular to eat sweet edible bunnies, Easter bunnies. Though these were made from a sugared pastry. At the time, chocolate was consumed as a beverage rather than a solid sweet and was still rather bitter as cocoa is known to be. However, Cadbury, oh, the good stuff. Cadbury, then still a new company, was experimenting with solid forms of chocolate. They jumped on the Easter on the Easter bandwagon and started making and started marketing chocolate Easter eggs. We never stopped eating them, and today chocolate Easter eggs and bunnies are one of Easter's biggest treats. Why do we eat cro hot cross buns? It's an interesting story. I can tell they're not going to tell you the full story though. So those these were taken from the Saxons who would bake fresh bread in honor of the goddess Oestra. The fresh buns would be marked with a cross. At the time, the cross represented the four quarters of the moon. So they're telling you enough. The four quarters of the moon, four seasons, and the wheel of life. 
it's pretty easy to see why hot cross buns were adopted to Christian festivities, where the symbol of a cross has a strong connection to the crucifixion of Christ. Traditional Easter foods will skip the 15,000 egg omelet from France. Although interesting, I think we'll, we'll skip. The rest food here? Yeah, okay. Okay. The, the other thing I kind of want to go over, and then we can just kind of BS the rest of the time. Did Jesus go to hell between his death and resurrection? I feel like we've talked about this. The Lizzo omelet, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like that's still too healthy for that. No offense, but for that body type. Like, you could eat 15,000 eggs over a reasonable period of time and still lose weight. So I think that's generous. I think it's very generous of you. Did Jesus go to hell between his death and resurrection? We've talked about this kind of periodically. Um, it's an interesting topic because it takes us to a lot of things that we end up talking about. Things, things like Sheol, the in-between, purgatory, what is hell actually like? What is the purpose? Things like that. So I, I did what we always do, which is if there's a question that we're going to talk about, we do what Christians do and we Google it. And then you find, you go to gotquestions.org and we read their answer first. And then after we go over their stuff, we can kind of break it down and see, see where we land. I'm sure Ghost knows a lot about this. I'm sure Rodriguez does too. This is a topic that I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty up to date on and feel very confident about because it's something that I always found very interesting. So there's a great deal of confusion regarding the question of whether Jesus went to hell between his death and resurrection. The concept that Jesus went to hell after his death on the cross comes primarily from the Apostles' Creed, which states, which also Nat knows about because she's one of those Catholics. The Apostles' Creed is also something I think everybody should read, just to be clear. Which states, he descended into hell. There are also a few scripture passages that, depending on how they are translated, not true. So immediately, not true. Not true. No matter how you translate them, in, in my opinion. So I guess I won't say not true. Not true in my opinion. Uh, regardless of how you translate them. It is, it is the best possible understanding, in my personal opinion, based on what I know. Do your own research. Anyways, depending on how they are translated, says gotquestions.org, describe Jesus going to hell. And studying the issue, it's important to first understand what the Bible teaches about the realm of the dead. I'm going to guess, and I swear to God I did not read this ahead of time. I'm going to guess just based on this last sentence. In studying the issue, it's important to first understand what the Bible teaches about the realm of the dead. What I would do if I didn't believe that Christ went to Sheol uh, before he ascended, or before the resurrection, what I would do is I would first completely dismantle the biblical view of what Sheol is. Because if you dismantle that view, that perspective, then you can do anything you want within this topic. You, you can completely change the trajectory of the discussion. And so that is my projection going into this. In the Hebrew scriptures, the word used to describe the realm of the dead is Sheol. It simply means the place of the dead or the place of the departed souls slash spirits. Let's start a four hour argument about which one is what. The New Testament Greek equivalent of Sheol is Hades, which also refers to the place of the dead. The New Testament indicates that Sheol or Hades is a temporary place where souls are kept as they await their final their final resurrection and judgment. Revelation 20, 11 through 15 makes clear makes a clear distinction between Hades and the Lake of Fire. The Lake of Fire is a permanent place and final, I'm sorry, a permanent and final place of judgment for the lost. Hades, then, is a temporary place. Catholics would call this purgatory. Many people refer to, and some Orthodox, but many people refer to both Hades and the Lake of Fire as hell. And this causes confusion. Jesus did not go to a place of torment after his death. He, but he did go to Hades. Okay, so maybe I was wrong. This is why it's important to be open-minded and be able to say you're wrong. Maybe I was totally wrong about where they're going to go with this. Valerie, good to see you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I liked that. Val, you missed that the, we, we've been discussing how Easter doesn't actually exist. Sheol or Hades is a realm with two divisions, a place of blessing and a place of judgment. 
They get that from Matthew 11, 23, 16, 18, Luke 10, 15, 16, 23, as well as Acts in chapter 2. The abodes of the saved and the lost are both generally called Hades in the Bible. The abode of the saved is also called Abraham's bosom in the King James Version or Abraham's side in the NIV. Funny note, funny note, and take it or leave it, but one of the funny things about the KJV is there are often ideas, concepts, and specific words that were used that on a translational front don't make any sense to why they were used. So there are conspiracy theories in the theological world that this is one of them, is that Abraham's bosom, which is normally translated as Abraham's side or his rib, there are many that believe King James was in to this is no in no way fact at all. So take this or leave this. But there are there are many jokes within the theological world that King James, of all the weird things that he had put in that translation, the mention here of bosom was just because he wanted it to be bosom for obvious male reasons. That's all. That's all. It's a joke. It's just a joke. Or Abraham's side in the New International Version in Luke 16, 22, and Paradise in Luke 23. The abodes of the saved and the lost are separated by a great chasm. That comes from Luke 16, 26. When Jesus died, he went to the blessed side of Sheol or Paradise. Some believe, based on particular interpretations of Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, that Jesus took believers with him from Sheol to another place of bliss that we now call heaven. Let's read that one, actually. So Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, therefore I say, when he ascended on high and he and and led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men, it's the gave gifts. So 9 says in saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower regions, of, into the lower regions, the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all heavens that he might fit all things. So the insinuation comes from he gave gifts to men. The interpretation is that he, he took people from there to heaven. More likely, Ephesians 4 refers to the ascension of Christ. All the unbelieving dead go to the cursed side of Hades to await final judgment. All the believing dead go to the blessed side of Hades to await the resurrection. Did Jesus go to Sheol? Yes or no? Yes, according to Jesus' own words, he went to the blessed region of Sheol. I want to look at one thing real quick. Where, what, what did they use to justify the split side version of Sheol? Okay, they just took the straight. Interesting. That's something we'll talk about at some point. I think we talked about it actually when we talked about Shield. I think Ghost had a, I think he gave a hard drive example where you, you partition your hard drive, which I think is a good way to describe it. I think there's a lot of argument about the split versions of Shield, but it's, you know, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Some of the confusion has arisen from such passages as, as Psalm 16, 10 through 11, which says, For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. As translated in King James Version, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Hell is not a correct translation in this verse. A correct reading would be the grave or shield. Jesus said to the thief beside him, today you will be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. He did not say, I will see you in hell. Jesus' body was in the tomb. His solar spirit went to be with the bus. What is this? Why are they doing this? I don't ever remember this being how they did this. This is the second time they've done that, isn't it? Where they, they've they've put soul and spirit side by side. Hold on. Yeah. It's the second time they've done that. So here's my question to you, because this is the type of people that we are, or at least that I am. Up here at the top, 
the place of the dead or the place of departed souls slash spirits, but then not a sentence later where souls are kept as they await the final resurrection and judgment, no slash spirits there. Then coming out of the paragraph we just read, you have souls alone. And then the next time soul is mentioned, it's slash spirit. Where, what is the differentiator for gotquestions.org? Why are they writing it that way? I'm very curious. This is how my brain works. I'm very curious what's going on with that. This is the next thing I'm going to try to go down a rabbit hole about. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Don't don't they always conflate soul and spirit, even in scripture? They do, but why are they doing it selectively is my question. They're doing mm. it selectively. So the, the first time soul comes up in the whole article, it's slash spirit. The second time, it's soul alone. The third time, it's soul alone. The fourth time, it's soul slash spirit. And the fifth time, it's soul slash spirit. Because, yeah, usually, yeah. I'm curious wh wh where the selective nature comes from. Where was it? Was there a spirit alone or just soul alone? Uh, I don't believe so, but hold on. So it's either soul or soul slash spirit. Yeah, at least in this article. Yeah, correct. It could just be the, the way the, the, writer, uh, the writer is deciding to. Maybe they forgot to say slash spirit up on that one. It could be. I'm probably just reading too hard into it. Um, I hope there's. But a... I mean, a, a soul is just a shaped spirit, so that's why they're they're kind of related in that way. But oh, definitely, they're definitely related. Yeah. I just I read too hard into things. Like I I wonder if the because I don't know if this was me. Like I feel like I would kind of do shit like that. I feel like so would you. Be somewhat mm -hmm. selective to try to be specific, but I probably am just reading too far into it. Who wrote this? It's kind of like saying it's kind of like pointing at like a, a wooden table that's made out of a block of wood and saying this is wood, but you can also say this is table. It's yeah, it's shaped yeah. wood, you know. It's it's the base material that's been shaped into a unique thing. No, totally true. I think I give too much credit sometimes. Maybe that's what it is. I like to think people are really putting some extra into it. I think they just made a mistake or whatever. I don't know. You're probably right. You're probably right. Uh, Nat said, I'll see you in hell. If I wasn't Christian, I'd totally say that to people. I still say that to people. I mean, you say it playfully. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Say, <laughs> say titty. King J Holy shit. Hold on. That's a, that's a cutout for me. Fucking great. Uh, Sorry, last region of Shields sounds like an oxymoron. What? Lesser region of Sheol. I keep telling you guys, I think there is a slight overlap, but difference between soul and spirit. Yeah, I mean, we can go down that rabbit hole again. I don't, I, I found it very interesting listening to the, the two of you go back and forth about that. It was very interesting. I get where each of you is coming from about it too. I don't know. At some point, we'll do that again. Once, once, if you guys ever get to a point where you feel like you're ready and we could have, you know, a different conversation, which I'm sure we could, but if you guys end up wanting to do that again, let me know. All right, where are we? Some have the viewpoint that Jesus went to hell or the suffering side of Sheol in order to further be punished for our sins. This idea is completely unbiblical. It was the death of Jesus on the cross that sufficiently provided for our redemption. It was his shed blood that affected our own cleansing from sin. 1 John 1, 7-9. As he hung there on the cross, he took the sin burden of the whole human race upon himself. He became sin for us. God made him, who had no sin, to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This imputation... A sin that helps us understand Christ's struggle in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm having a hard time tonight. Gethsemane. With the cup of sin that he asked to pass from him. Matthew 26, 20, Matthew 26, 39. As Jesus neared death, he said, it is finished. His suffering in our place was complete. His soul slash spirit. Went to Hades, the place of the dead. Jesus did not go to hell or the suffering side of Hades. He went to Abraham's side or pity or the blessed side of Hades. Jesus' suffering ended the moment he died. The payment for our sin was paid. 
He then awaited the resurrection of his body and his return to glory and his ascension. Did Jesus go to hell? No. Did Jesus go to Sheol, Hades? Yes. So I was wrong. I'm very comfortable with that. I really thought they were going to try to pull something on that. So it's good to see. I think that was a pretty decent, a decent walkthrough. That's not a bad one. Oxymoron is a great punk band. Is it actually a punk band? Probably, right? In the myth of error, error died and woke up in an... That is so small. Hold on. In an intermediate space and saw on one side the soul departing at either opening of heaven and earth when sentence had been given on them. What do you have? Funny. Why? I thought you had a snake in your hand. I mean, you could. We're about done. At the end, and at the two other openings, other souls, some ascending out of the earth, dusty and worn with travel, some descending out of heaven, thin and bright. The myth of error is found at the end of Plato's Republic. Oh, okay. I'm like, man, that sounds really familiar, but there was no part of me that was going to place it. That was a great, that was, that was a great thing to throw out. Yes, they are a punk band. Yeah, Plato's got some wild stuff. Let's see. I don't think we have time for all this. So I guess, I guess I'm curious. Hold on. Start a Q&A? No, how about a poll? How does Q&A work? Hold on. Hold on. We're, we're done with anything that matters. So anybody who has something better to do, please go. Let's see. How does this work? So Q&A versus a poll. What happens here? I don't know. You guys let me know how this works. I don't know how this works. And now I can't see the chat. It's nothing. It's nothing? It doesn't. Yeah. End Q&A. You, you can't see anything? No, I mean, I can see it, but when you click on it, it's just... I feel like you didn't enter a piece of info or something. I don't know. I mean, you're probably right, yeah. Never tried it. So, hold on. Is Sheol partitioned? All right, there's a poll up there now. That's what I wanted to ask. Is... Is she all partitioned? I think, Ghost, correct me if I'm wrong. You you are a believer of this, right? The hard drive theory? Yeah, I don't see any way around it, so. So I'm curious what the rest of you who are here think. Is she all partitioned? And for anybody who's having a slow night, it's just split. Like we were, we were reading if there's a blessed side of Sheol and uh, a not so blessed side of Sheol, a more dark side of Sheol. And then if... If when Jesus died, he visited that area, that that plane or section or whatever you might want to call it, whether he went to one side or the other. Absolutely. Plato was the OG sci-fi writer. Yeah, 100%. Everybody. Interesting. I don't think that's a common belief. I guess I shouldn't say that. Not that it's not common. I don't think it's an extremely popular belief among like mainstream Christianity. I know a lot. Of I think Christians if you were to go into a church and ask them what is Sheol, they probably wouldn't even be able to answer that. Yeah, exactly. I said the the consensus, from what I understand, I'll run a poll on Instagram tonight because I, I get a there's not a lot, but like I can usually get you know between a hundred and a hundred fifty people to answer it. So I'd be I'd be curious to see, because my understanding is still that like most Christians see the the verses about Jesus going to this area as hell. He went to hell. 
and then he came back. The shield thing, I don't, I don't, I'd be, I'd be really curious, man. I wish, that's the thing, like, I, I would kill to even just volunteer to, to like, Pew Research, because I think there's a lot of studies that could be done that would be really interesting from, like, a, a biblical or theological or just sociological within the Christianity, like, sector to find out what the hell people think. Because I just assume all the time. And I think a lot of the time I assume worse than is reality. And the more I have you guys around, the more I, I, I become open to thinking that. Because a lot of you tell me I'm wrong. And I'm like, shit, well, if everybody here is saying that, and everybody's here pretty goddamn smart, then maybe I'm wrong. And I have a very twisted view of what Christians actually think. But then also, then I go on social media instagram specifically because that's where most of the people are and i'm just blown away with like the ignorance the arrogance and the uh the indifference sometimes it's just kind of crazy but i would kill you would almost have to go to like multiple churches and then just like do um interviews and just ask these questions like man on the street style i don't see how else to really get a, like a full spectrum analysis without I mean you'd have to do that then you'd have to like go to the mall you know like to as a control group it's a really great idea huh. because asking people on Instagram is probably not going to get you the most accurate results no it's horrible yeah it's horrible it's just the only it's the only like group of data that i have access to i don't know man i'm like i'm very seriously considering that that'd be it'd be relatively easy to do i could do it without really spending any money like i have most of the equipment to make that happen and have it be watchable and also just to be honest with all of you i'm back to like i just don't give a shit about youtube anymore i can't do it i can't sit and edit videos i just don't care i don't care so I'll do one every couple of weeks probably, but I've been trying to figure out like something to actually do that's that adds value because it's like I'm tired of just fucking saying the same shit on camera, being annoying to myself and probably being annoying to other people. I just have no interest in it. I love doing this with you guys. I have no interest in doing YouTube beyond it. But then the flip side of that is like, that's why we don't get new people in here. I have to do things to like get people here. So that our group can, you know, we can every time somebody new joins it's like an awesome person and they add great value to what we have going here. But it takes me doing the social media shit and I just don't care. I don't care. And I'm so busy and I feel like it's wasting my life. But that actually like I'm very interested in that. I think that would be really cool if I could go out and, you know, drag cat with me when I can and just go to churches on Sunday and just grab people as they come out of church and ask them questions. And, and I, I live in freaking Chicago. So there's a lot of big churches, uh, like national churches that people know about. I can pull people and I can go to Woodfield Mall or something like a massive mall in Illinois and use that as a control group. That sounds interesting. That sounds fun. And that sounds like it would actually be fun to watch and be fun to like do. Camp potty mouth. I think so. I think it'd be really good. I'm seriously considering. I'm going to talk to Kat when we get off. It's not a huge time investment. Oh, could you like print up some business cards with like a QR code that leads to your Discord with a little message or whatever, hand it out? Yeah, I used to have one when when I was like doing really well on YouTube years ago. I, I had like a business card because it's what I was like. It was making a decent living from it, so I, I just need to rework them. But yeah, like just have the Discord group on it. That's it, and just hand that off. This is a great idea because Ghost is going to have a little. I'm going to all ghost or all credit goes to ghost in small print at the bottom of the business card. It's a great idea. I think it'd be really good. And sometimes I could even go to Chicago against my better judgment and talk to people in the city and just see, but I think that'd be really good. Just start freaking taking poll. Just so, all right. I'm going to post something in discord for you guys. I want questions. What are things that you want to know about Christians, about what they believe, what their lifestyle is like, what they think, how they think, how they approach theology, what the common theological beliefs are. But think of like the most specific things like, like Sheol. Do you know what Sheol is? And then maybe a couple follow-up questions if they do. 
But just, I bet, I bet 70% is my guess. Say, no, I don't. And then there's no need for follow-up questions. But for the 30% that do, you know, have a couple follow-up questions ready and ask them those questions. And just no, no input from me, just ask and just see, see what Christians think. It's a freaking great idea. Great idea. Ghost. I'm going to go through all my stuff. I might bring some people into the channel channels. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, regardless though, I just, I would enjoy doing it. And at least those of you who are already here and the people who fumble in from shorts and stuff, I just feel like the crap that I'm doing now is like, it's, there's no value to it whatsoever. Complaining about people, about Christians, like there's no value to it, but providing, providing data, I think would be good value. And even if it doesn't go anywhere, I'd at least feel good about doing it. I don't feel good about the stuff I'm doing right now. Like the things I've put out lately, I don't feel good about it. I just feel like I'm playing the YouTube game. So I think this is a great possible potential alternative that would actually add some value and like help help people understand like what Christians think. And then I'm sure it'll lead to me having conversations because that's how it usually goes. So then I'll end up sitting with one person for an hour and being like, no, 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 no. What do you think about this? Why do you think that? That could be a video. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think I think this could actually be really good. It's more honest and that's phenomenal. Now, nah, I'm sorry. You're right. I shouldn't swear on Easter, but this is a freaking great idea. And so I'm very excited. So I apologize. That reminds me of the car salesman who would go to other job fairs and offer people jobs. <laughs> I've never seen that. Is that like a popular internet thing? Wait, where God will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats? Where does this take place? Go said it takes place from the moment of birth. Mikhail, the great funneling. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this is what I'm going to do. Do we have a forum up here? No. All right. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to run so I get some time with Kat before the week starts, but it's going to pop up on the screen here in a minute. I'm going to add a forum under the smart stuff section, which is where the off topic, the theology, culture, news, conspiracy, the main chat sections, I'm going to add a forum there. So it's going to look like the two little chat bubbles. It's like our stream areas, the theist thesis and culture and news in that forum. It's going to be locked. So you won't be able to make any new posts, but I'm going to make one post in there. That's just questions for, I don't know, I'll word it, but what we're talking about, I'll figure out how to word it, but questions that you want to know about just Christians, about Christians as people or Christians as a group. And sometimes I think maybe just pull as many people from one church as possible and ask them something pointed about what their church believes and see where they align with that. I could also do research ahead of time and find out like, what are the church, what, what theological bend is the church? What are their general theological beliefs? Some of the more specific stuff that if you've been going to that church for a while, you should know meaning you should be paying attention. If you are paying attention, then you know these things. I could do that research ahead of time and then pull people who had been at the church for only X amount of years, you know, five years or more only, and see if people are actually learning while they're there. Because I'm also under the very negative belief that people aren't really learning when they're there. It's just like a, a social engagement and a worship because the music. I mean, I mean music, I don't mean actual worship of God. I'd be, I'd be interested to see that, but any, anything that would pertain to this, it's just going to be one post at the top and then the bottom will be open for you guys to just drop things in there. And then I'll collect all of those off site, and then I'll see, uh, I'm going to try to get this done. The first one, like this week, next week at the latest, because I think it would like take less time than the, the garbage amount of time that I'm spending on what I'm doing right now. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what you have? Oh, you have the one that's most likely to bite me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to give me? Why not? You gonna bite me? I there's a few. Why? I just woke them up. Okay. Well, at least get them on. Oh. Get them on TV. See, huh? That's, that's snake. He's gonna bite me. 
He might buy that. That's all right. <laughs> Who that is? Who's outside our house? Who's outside that? Infinite content generation activator. <laughs> That's not honest content generation activator. That's what I've been missing. I feel revitalized in a sense. This could be really good. I still cannot access the fun and game section in the server. Okay, well, since you're here, since you're here, since you're here, check this out. <laughs> Nat said snakes in the chat. We'll put pictures of snakes in there for you. Uh, okay, uh, who was that? Ruth. Give Joe a stone cold stunner. <laughs> Uh, so look, the, the the only way I know how to fix what your problem is, the only way I know how to fix it, is to come into Discord. And you can go to Channels and Roles. It's past this screen. If you go Browse Channels, you have the ability to check these on or off. So if you come down to Fun and Games, yours might be unchecked. Beyond that, I have no idea. So if that doesn't work, let me know. I'll go into the back end of Discord and see if for some reason you got blocked from something. But you should be able to check this on or check these all individually. And then you should have access to all of them. If that doesn't work, though, let me know. And I'll try to go into your profile and see if something's wrong with your profile. Because you should obviously be able to access those. Should they be checked? If they're not checked, you will not see them. Oh, that'll be gay. great asking random questions, Christians, with your snake wrapped around your wrist or hand. You could do it. Yeah, they were wearing them as belts today. That's true. I've heard a shocking amount of Christians say that realistically, they don't believe anything happens after death. It's just nothingness. I'd be interested to survey that too. Okay, so yeah, all of that. Guys, any questions like this, I'm going to try to do the first one today. Oh, I'm sorry, not today. This week, this week, this week. You're not going to come to the mall with me? Is it because there was an active shooter there last week? Got it. You will go for some lush? All right. The, the forum is going to be called Man on the Street until I re rename it. And actually, you know what? Let's just do... I don't know what the smartest way to do this is. I could just do a chat channel. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll post it later, though, and I'll tag everybody in it. No pressure. They are all checked. All right, Ruth, I'll look at your stuff when I get off right now, too. I'll see if there's anything I can do about it. Go ask about their understanding of the concept of the Holy Trinity. That's a good one, yeah. That is a good one. All right, for now, I'm just creating a thread in off topic and you guys can all drop them here. It is called man in the street. All right, it's in there. So if you go into off topic, you will see man on the street. Just in case some of you don't know how to use threads, everybody should be able to reply to threads, but not everybody should be able to create a thread. So if you can't make a thread, there's a reason. Uh, I think only two user groups are allowed to. But come into threads and drop your questions but if you're on desktop you just hit this little thread thing it looks like a, a sewing thread you can click it and then these are all the threads that we have going some are old the one i just made is brand new if you're on your phone to get to threads you have to open off topic and then click on off topic in the middle 
once you click on that, you'll see a little thread button, and then you can go into the threads from there. What's going on? You have a snake in a boot. You want to bring that boot over here? You want to bring that boot over here? She literally has a snake in a boot right now. Question, idea, submission. Yeah, so just drop everything in there for now. If we get this going and it becomes something that I actually do, then I'll create a whole section for it, but I don't want to waste space until then. There's a snake in a boot. Where's his head? In there? The snake in a boot. <laughs> Got a really good grip on you. Wild. That's heavy. It's a heavy, a heavy snake. snake. There's a whole snake in there. Good God. The perfect roomie for you. Buzz Lightyear is losing his mind right now. <laughs> the guy next to me on the other side of the curtain said, Easter used to be a good holiday, but now it's too commercialized. I hate it. See, there you go. He knows what's up. Give that guy a high five. Say a weird tattoo guy on the internet said to give you a high five. Ask them to read numbers 2222 in Hebrew. That would be good too, just to have them read like uh like Philippians 413. Read it to me and explain what it means. That would also be good. And that's endless too. Take find a verse that's used out of context constantly. Have them read it and then have them explain what it means. Tell me what the context is. Be very interesting. Why is he gonna bite His you? His little snoot is right there. In a boot. You can see him. Hell yeah, brother. All right. I should walk on the car show. He should just carry the snake in the boot. All right. So uh, use that, please. Threads there. Right now it's in the drop down because it's, uh, you know, it's new. It'll disappear after three days. Then you'll have to come in off topic. You'll have to hit the threads. You have to go to Man in the Street. I will post reminders every once in a while, you know, like once a week or whatever. I'll drop a link in there just to remind you guys that it exists. And then, uh, like I said, I'll try to do one this week or next week because I think it'd be really interesting. So please put some ideas in there because I'd like to do one of you guys' questions first to kick it off. All right, so Ghost is the man. Phenomenal idea. Makes you feel a hell of a lot better than talking about the whatever podcast and a Christian witch. So, good stuff. All right, guys, I'm out. I'm going to go hang out with Kat before the work week starts. Thursday, we're talking about prayer. What is prayer? Why do we pray? I posted something also in Off Topic a while ago, so it's probably buried. Um, asking you guys to bring specific questions. Yeah, you all buried it. But specific questions around prayer, here it is. So I'm going to drop that fresh and off topic too so please visit that and just if there's anything you can add to it please do so that we can have as in-depth of a conversation as possible and because i'm going to really try to organize the streams more so that we stay on topic better specifically when we have more than two people on because sometimes it gets a little crazy dumb city hospital didn't help i decided to go to saint rose hospital because you know it's easter and it makes me feel closer to the lord <laughs> fair enough Fair enough. Love y'all, Ghost. Thank you very much. Seriously, phenomenal idea. I think this could be great. All right, good to go. Happy uh, Easter, everybody. Love y'all. Good night.